And then I'm gonna go here. Syringe. Saw right away. Play this cover. And that's how you play a 1v2. And if you love that, please stick around for the full video. Hey guys, Sonics here. I wanted to play a game and just explain the things I'm doing. Like, it's not even anything crazy. I just want to, like, just play it and explain every rationale, every decision making that I'm doing live. So I'm literally recording this live. I'm not overdubbing anything. I'm, this is just straight up me playing the game and just the thoughts that are going on in my head. So hopefully it can help a lot of the new players. And even if you're an intermediate or, you know, seasoned player, it, it might help you think about things you don't usually think about. So the first thing I'm going to do is, of course, Fragment in this, this is World's Edge. Fragment is really hot. So what I want to do is I really have a nice spot right here of the map that I like to drop. In the top right, you can see that a lot of people are dying, so I can't loot for too long. I kind of have to get in that fight. So I have a decent amount of ammo. Good amount of med, um, you know, heals. So now I could walk up and third party. So fragment is, a, you know, there's a lot of fights over here. So we just kind of have to third party smartly. This is a good building too, because not a lot of people land in this one. Everyone lands here in the middle. Yeah, in that building where they're all fighting. It's called streamer building. So if you get, you know, if you ref hear people refer to that place, it's called streamer building. And arc star that. What I can do now is, is that guy's dying, so what I can I can try to take a shot at him. Oh, he's so one. So I can hear them on height. I'm gonna take height. This guy's gonna be like right here. Play the stairs. Killed him. Listening for that zip. Usually there's gonna be someone that comes up there. I can quickly loot. I'm gonna take the car over the R, uh, the R9 just because I can have that dual ammo type. Change my skin. I can hear that guy. I'm gonna give a pipe. I'm gonna go down here. I'm playing backside. I'm safe. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna make sure I go to full backup because I'm really, really low. I get a full reset here. Prioritize my shield battery. So that's why it's faster. Med kit. Because I want to get in that fight. I do not want them to finish. That fight. That guy's looting, standing still. I'm going to wait until that... Almost knocked that guy. Knocked him. He just died. That guy just killed him. So now I can see if I can get an angle on him. Looks like he knows. So it's not really smart to engage that fight. Since the, since I try to, if I try to, there you go, there you go. I'm going to wait. Now I can go ahead and walk up on this. That guy's dead. He has a peacekeeper, which I should grab. So I can save up on ammo. What I'm doing here is I'm just assessing my situation. That guy's really low. I think he's going to be right here, actually. Nope, he's not. And I do not want to play back there because I have no escape spot. So I'm going to try to loot really quick. Digi-threat is nice, especially I was fighting a Bangalore, which has smoke. That's the one that just had smoke. Medkit, as I said. He's right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to arc star that and he's going to run out that door watch. And he's going to be right here. He's going to climb up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take height. Height is always your best friend. He's right here. He's dead. I'm going to go ahead and loot his box. Now he just took over this building. 
So what I'm doing is just I'm being strategic with every decision that I make. Height, cover, everything that I've been talking about in my videos. And as you can see, I'm not really stressing every time I'm in a fight. I know I'm at a disadvantage, but I have to play everything, you know, smartly. See, if I try to heal, that guy's going to take the zip line and then I get fried. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep healing actively. See, I see this teammate right here. Cracked him. I'm going to drop on height because I know they're both here. Give up that. Okay, so I lost that fight. I could have taken a different floor. That would have been a little bit better for me, but hey, you know what? Not too shabby. Another good spot that I want to kind of show you guys is Lava Siphon. Right here, it's a nice little isolated fight. So I'm going to go ahead and drop and just kind of assess how many people are dropping. So it looks like we have a good amount of people dropping in the, sh in the short end. So what I can do is I can kind of third party everybody by looting right here. Let's check that quadrant. See, you kind of have to find your outskirts because I know for sure no one's landing here. See, nice and isolated and it's a good amount of loot for me so I can at least get a weapon. So and if you, if you don't play Valk and you don't get that scanning ability, that's all right. You can use, you know, just the skydive trails as a way to kind of, oh, they're already fighting over here. I got to get in that fight ASAP before they finish. So I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff I don't need. I'm gonna keep the heavy just in case I get a heavy weapon. And I gotta get in that now. They're down here. Just stole that kill. Just stole that kill. Just stole- oh my gosh. <laughs> 95 damage with two kills. Well, four kills. There's a dude right there. He's dead. That's what's called recoil smoothing. As you can see, I was, I pretty much had no uh, recoil there. So countdown isn't too shabby. I can land in the backside here. Yeah, it's not too bad. Backside here, and then I might have to fight this team early on, depending if they land here or not. So we've got three teams here, which totals us amount of six people because we're playing duos I just got scanned okay Mastiff there's someone in my building already I heard a door open <laughs> I think I think I'm just more paranoid since I don't have a teammate with me All right, so it looks like I'm going to get pushed right here. So use these audio cues um, as your best friend. So I'm going to show you. Uh, you always want to make sure you have a backup spot. So if I get fried here, I'm going to play this and I'm going to keep backing up. See, watch. So I'm going to play back up here. He's going to push that door. I have perfect angle right here. I have enough time to pop one. Whoa, that's his teammate right there. Emergency backup. And then I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna play here. Try that guy. Sell right away. Syringe. Another syringe. Once I hear the res, I have to push that. Sell right away. Play this cover. And that's how you play a 1v2. Oh my. I was literally 1 HP there. The Oh my gosh. That's how you play a 1v2 right there. Can't celebrate too much though because you never know when a third party is coming. But right there is a beautiful example of how even when you're really disadvantaged, you can still win the fight. No matter what. I didn't give up till the very end, and guess what? It served me right. So in that situation, I really want you to see exactly what I did there. I played right here, knowing that there was going to be a guy coming, right? I, I had a backup spot right here ready. 
Unfortunately, his teammate was right here. So what I did was I went over here knowing that his smoke was still active and I know he shot me. So then I took my second backup, which is right here. I know this guy was ready to push me in this angle and this guy right here was going to send me too. He literally popped his missiles. So what I did was I took height, another backup spot right here and I knew he was going to come. So then I played this angle right here perfectly and just I, I made sure I didn't even peek unless I absolutely needed to fried him and his teammate and I made sure cell battery whatever I took I always healed that's how you win in this game your HP is your best friend it literally is yep perfect so it looks like this is a is this a tree oh my gosh did I loan into trios I did oh, okay I'm gonna play this house right here so I can loot up really quick and I kind of want to bait them to come over here nemesis might be not as good actually oh no it's a I'm playing duos the guy was solo too so now I'm in a pretty tough spot here. Kill that guy. I have to loot his box right away, so... Because I'm going to get sent right now. He's really close, this guy. I don't like not knowing where he is. Ride him a little bit. Play it slowly, right? You guys see, I was stuck there, but I had to isolate one out. That's what you have to do in these type of situations. You have to choose which one you know you can eliminate. Another good little spot is down here. Let's just see if there's a team that will land with us. Let's see. Yeah, not too bad. We could take this fight. I want to show you guys how to get these isolated 1v1s. So. It looks like they're kind of splitting off here. They're landing close together. So what I can do is I can loot this building. If there's anything in there. Wow, that's absurd. Oh, R3 right away. I'm going to back up. Try to see if I can get some more guns in this building. The R3 is going to serve me really well for distance. Two R3s. Oh my gosh. Wow. That's cool. So I'm going to take height on my building. Remember, height is your best friend. One's right there. And then one's right there. I can see both Both are aiming at me right now. But they, the way I want to play this... So that's a Wraith. And he has whites. I don't know what the other guy is. So I need to make sure I can beam this Wraith first. You see, he might peek that door or this window. Yeah, no, see that Wraith? Beamed me really hard. I traded with him so I can heal. His teammate might push me now, which I hope he does. Yep, the teammate is here. So I have to capitalize on this and then make sure I take height. Now, in order for me to split up this 1v1, one has to climb up. Which I hope. Wait, perfect. Now I have to get that shield swap before that guy comes. There we go. Oh my, I almost lost that. Wow, that was hard. <laughs> that was not easy. Um, I could have definitely lost that. If <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So lessons here. How did I take this 1v2? I played height up here, right? I was expecting... Now, the more you play, you'll know these things. I was expecting this guy to climb up because he felt confident in trying to 1v1 me. So I said... Let me wait for one to come up so that way I can isolate and beam him. Perfect. 
I did. Thankfully, my shots were hitting. I fully killed him. I got his shield swap. And then I played in here because I thought it was a, I knew it was a caustic. So I thought he was going to be inside. I didn't see this barrel here that hit me. I went outside and he's standing here. He has some cover and bam, I'm out of the open. It, right there, I had absolutely zero cover. So I panic, used my jets. I landed here and pretty much had to beam him just with what I have at that point. When it's an, an isolated 1v1 like that, you just have to use what you have and you can't I mean, there's really nothing else you could do at that point. So that was a nice little um, 1v2. I hope, you know, you learned a little bit from that. All right, another great spot is down here. I can get a nice little fight in here. Perfect. Oh, so we got a an Apex Predator with us here. So for those of you who don't know, an Apex Predator is just players that are the top 750 players in the world. So yeah, we're in these kind of lobbies right now. That's just kind of how the matchmaking works, unfortunately. We can't really do anything about it, but... A trick that I learned from watching um, other Apex, you know, uh, really good Apex players is that they say, you kind of have to, like, not care who you're fighting, because once you know who you're fighting, it's... that's it. You, you kind of psych yourself out because you know this guy is an Apex Predator or the best player in the world. You kind of have to not care. Like, right now, I just have to not care who I'm fighting. So I know that they're in here. I can see there's two of them. I know that they're going to third party now. So what I can do is I could walk up behind them. They're going to walk up even faster because they see people are dying. You have to kind of be in their mindset a little bit. Take that alternator. I mean, this R9. And now I have to kind of just walk up faster. So I know that they're going to drop and loot. They're all low right here. This guy just dropped. There we go. And that right there is how you third party an Apex Predator. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so I do want to show that movement what I just did at the end. I, I did a slide kill. I don't know if you guys saw that. I slid into it, so that helps me get that momentum and it makes me harder to, to hit. Um, that strategy really, really saves you because no one is expecting to track you when you're doing that. So that right there, I want you to kind of, um, you know, if you need to replay it, replay it, but use that to kind of help you understand what, exactly what I did. That slide kill and hip firing too. I didn't aim down my sights, um, which helped me get more mobility. That's sort of the mindset that you have to go into these games because guess what? You're always going to have hard games. I mean, I, I, if, if you want me to tell you that the games are going to get easier, they're not. The games are going to stay sweaty. You just have to kind of shift your mindset and think that, hey, you know what? These games are going to be sweaty and these games are still going to be hard, but I'm going to try my best because I don't care what happens. And that's exactly what happened. Ooh, let me show you guys a good spot in this map. This is Olympus. I want to show you a really, really, really good spot that you can third party everybody. So there's going to be a lot of teams here. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 a lot of teams. So I like this spot because it gives you a nice little isolated area to kind of loot up and third party. Usually there's a team here once in a while, but it's not too, too shabby. See, I just got a team. So what I can do right now is I could immediately go in there because they don't really have guns. And I could I have to fight this. So I just eliminated that guy. See see how the difference when you when you immediately take that fight? I didn't w give them a chance. I didn't really give him a chance to really loot up. I mean, most people would 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 give like a minute or two, but that's the difference when you take the fight to them. When you, when you react, you know, it, it's not as good because now they're playing, you're playing on their moves. Right there, that Wraith was playing on what I was doing. So that's a really, really good tip because it kind of helps you get in that mindset of, 
um, taking fights. If you know you landed first, take that fight. Take it. You go in that fight because you know you're going to win because that team is not going to expect you to push them right away just like I did. Okay, it looks kind of like this spot is not too bad. Yeah, that team is going there. So, let's go see if we could do some work. I got a team with me now. I got to loot fast because I know I don't really have the time to... I know they're both on me now. I gotta kinda get this isolated fight right here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take height. I can hear him reviving his teammate. So I'm fine right here. There we go. I tried wall bouncing right there. It didn't work. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much how you take a 1v2 in that situation. What I did was I kind of... In this spot right here, I fried this guy hard. So then I knew this guy was coming down the stairs. I immediately played right here. He didn't know where I was because I he, he was expecting me to be right here. So that's when you kind of have to be really, really fast in those situations. You don't really have time to think. So you have to be one step ahead when you're playing 1v2s. You can't be a step behind. You have, you're fighting two people, you have to be always one or two, even even two steps um, ahead of them, right? And as you can see there, uh, I, I knew I had the advantage, so I tried pulling off a wall bounce kill like that, and it, obviously it didn't work, because I activated my jets. But you can have fun, once you get the hang of it, you know, just have a little playful fun. I mean, it, it's a game after all, right? We're not <laughs> out here trying to sweat it out like crazy, you know? But, yeah, at the end of the day, just... I'm gonna practice what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and push on to the next fight. And that just shows you the power of shotguns, right? I didn't even have to reload. I had that shotgun was just bam, that you know, every every bullet counts. Like you don't have to worry about looting the craziest amount of ammo or anything like that, because the shotgun will give you more than enough for just one stack. So right away heal. Recharging shields. I can see that there's two of them. There's a dude right there, so I have to... Oh my gosh, that's a lot of people. Is there two different teams here? I'm dropping to give height. Now this guy's gonna... Right there. The power of... Oh. Well, that's the power of using cover right there. Definitely. Oh! Let's see who wins this. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, the power of cover. I mean, I was one HP there, but I, 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 you know, use cover to my advantage. All right, let's see here. Let's drop down here. Ooh, this is hot. This is this is this is really hot. Um, I want to third party this. This is a little too hot. So this this area right here is not too shabby. Because I mean that spot could have been good, but. So a little too many people and you have to know your limits when you fight fights like that because you know as much as you want to go and you know go and rambo guns blazing you are going to lose if you don't have guns i mean let's be honest running around never eliminated anybody so we just have to be you know cognizant about these things okay so okay you know what let's go mastiff it's been this been treating us really good all day. So, there's somebody on us already. I can hear that. Need to hit the afterburners. So he has a rampage. I'm gonna take right here. Get even playing field. So I'm gonna burn his building down. I'm gonna pop a cell. Creating that distance is exactly what you need. He's gonna climb right here. I don't know where he went. So right there is exactly what I wanted to show you. How movement really changes things for you. Oh my goodness. So he was right there. Up there. 
I popped my fatigue wall bounce. If I can even get it, wow. Talk about pulling it off on the spot, right? But not right now. <laughs> so I pulled off a fatigue wall bounce right here. Why can I not do this? <laughs> okay, whatever. Pretend I did a fatigue wall bounce, right? Um, oh, right there. And then bam, I shot a mid air, I think. And then it, it, he couldn't track me for the longest time. So that just shows you the ability of using movement to your advantage. Okay. Movement can really, really, really help your fights. And it can really make or break that fight because it, like they said, movement has never killed anybody, but movement makes you a much harder target to kill him. Now, as much as I love the Mastiff, Peacekeeper is always my my baby, so I gotta kind of pick that up, you know? <laughs> if, the, if this PK sells me, hey. Rest in peace. Right here, right here. I just third partied. Nah, I'm hunting now. I'm hunting now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, I'm clipping that. <laughs> that was really cool. <laughs> okay, well, that's the definition of um, third partying. Let's try something else here. Let's see. Okay. No, we got a 2v2 here. Let's take it. Let's take it. Why not? When you see an opportunity, take it. So that team is going to land um, on those... Oh, did they just... Whoa! Okay, that was pretty cool. They just bounced in that thing. Alright. I saw you, I saw you. Alright. I have to loot fast, because I don't know what this team has. A skull piercer might if I had a scope on that thing that would be deadly fortunately this is more of a close range fight okay so I'm gonna value the havoc first is that close range ability I'm gonna have to 1v1 this guy and then take height right away this guy's gonna climb up There we go. Now that's how you play height and cover together. <laughs> Take them all down myself, oh my gosh, so Ooh, in situations like that, you have to pretty much, you know, I've been in worse think fast on your feet, number one. Number two, you have to get height, give up height, get height. I mean, there's the amount of times that I could have died in that fight was really close, but I... Don't think I even lost HP. Oh, I did. I did. I lost a little bit. Um, it, Just the power, the sheer power of just, you know, playing that height and then making sure I beam that first guy taking height right away is really crucial to your success in this game. It's really is. That, uh, no one's going with us here. This is when, oh, actually we got a duo right here. See that? Last second. You know what, I'm just gonna land with them. Screw it. See if we could just get them right away. So I knocked that guy. I'm gonna take height right away. I can hear him. Right there. So what I can do is I can make sure he doesn't get rezzed. Perfect. He actually stuck it, look. So that's why... That's why you don't, like, res right away. When you know that... <laughs> I don't know why he was trying to revive his teammate there. So a learning lesson that you can learn from what they did was that don't revive your teammate. Use their knockdown shield when it comes to situations like that because your teammate's knockdown shield is more valuable than you both vulnerable. Like, his back was turned there completely. Well, I was able to get a free beam in both of them, and I had an L-Star, which Another doesn't need to reload. So, quick little things like that, that kind of, you could learn from, you know, other players, and what they 
you know, should work on, but... That's alright. We, um... You know? I'm glad that they tried, at least. They just died. I have to take height right away while they're looting. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! <laughs> well, that's, uh... <laughs> Nothing I could say about that. Well, that, that guy had a really nice shot. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, let's see. Not too bad. We got... It's a lot of teams. That is... that is. So, you know what we could do? We could third party. We could swerve out. That's a lot of teams. Wow. So, right here is not too bad of a spot. See? You kind of have to just keep looking. Even if you know that that spot is going to be good, you just have to always be ready to swerve out because you never know when... Situations like that can happen, and you're not gonna get a gun. Right. Let's see here. They're already fighting. I can't loot any longer. Actually, there's still bins over here. Just to be safe, because I really don't have ammo for my light weapon. There we go. This game is all about what do you, what is the most important use of your time. Right there, I needed to loot. I can't fight with a Mozam ten different teams. So I have to choose between which fight do I choose? Um, there's a team to the right, and then there's a team to the left. I'm gonna choose fighting this team. Just because it was a little bit closer to me, and... Yeah, over here. I can hear him already. They're on height right now, it sounds like. Or Immediately popping heals. Charging up my shields. The charge rifle right there. So now I only have one angle to play. That guy's gonna come and shoot me. I have to take height. There we go. That's how you... <sighs> Immediately heal right away. But as you can tell, what I did there was... Um, used every available option I had until I had none left. So there's a team right there. I'm gonna have to play a little quiet. They don't know yet. So they're gonna try to fight this team here. Rings close, and what we could do is we could get everything ready. So we could play this rock. This rock is beautiful because this team's gonna heal. Now let me show you. There's gonna be a guy gonna come around this rock and he's gonna start healing. Watch. He's knocked now. See? You could predict these things. You could quite literally predict this. The more that you play this game, the more you understand the way these mechanics work. So just playing a few games, I hope you guys learned something from that. And these situations, when you're playing by yourself, happen a lot. When your teammate leaves the game, when your teammate's knocked, you kind of have to learn how to navigate 1v2, 1v3 situations. So I hope that was helpful for you. And I hope to continue doing more of these. And let me know what your thoughts are on this. Because I, you know, thinking out loud is um, my favorite song. But in terms of the game, it's something that we don't think of much you know we just think we go through these motions so sometimes to just slow it down and break everything down in a small digestible manner is just everything we need to improve in this game so i hope that helps and i look forward to seeing you in the next video i hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and please take care